Okay, here we go. I'm going to do a quick little video on how I process brass in anticipation of reloading. Here we have a Folgers coffee can with 45 ACP brass. This is just brass that's come off of the, the range floor. And it doesn't actually look too bad. Most of this is once fired. You can see it's got the uh, gold colored primers. This one's got a little scoring on the side here, so that may actually be a little older. Don't know. Anyway, this has just been picked up, sorted with the brass sorter three-piece plastic system, which gets rid of a lot of dirt and sand and so forth. In that process, it all falls out of the strainers. And then sorted out and put into these cans. Next up is going to be the wet portion of the process. Next step of the process involves initial cleaning. This is a lingerie laundry bag. I think I got these at a dollar store somewhere. I bought I think four or five of them assuming that they would wear out uh, with a rough treatment with brass but I have yet to go through one so who knew. Alright, take the brass and what I have found is that I can have to do about half of one can. And yeah, that's about right. And what I do at this point is basically slinky the cases, I call it, back and forth over the trash can. That gets the majority of the dirt, sand, etc., the loose stuff out and we move on to the next phase. For the next phase we're going to use Birchwood Casey's Brass Cartridge Case Cleaner and this is a liquid that is supposed to for 16 ounces make up two gallons of cleaning solution. So I've got a little less than half a gallon of hot water. I find that hot water works best but you can use it even at room temperature and it still seems to be pretty effective. And that's uh, <clears throat> about a quarter of the bottle of the cleaning solution. Here I've got the brass that I've already shaken out. And I'm basically going to <clears throat> submerge it in the water and do the slinky trick. I'll do this, then I'll pull it up out of the water. Slinky it off to get it all out. That's just an initial rinse. Basically, once, once it's underwater and exposed to the solution, the solution is going to work on the, the fouling and on the metal itself. So basically, the real trick is after your first couple of rinses, you want to just get it underwater, agitate it such that you get most of the air out of the cases, which means that you've got fluid inside and all around the cases. At this point, we're just going to let it soak for the recommended three minutes. Okay. I did agitate this once during the three-minute wait, which is recommended. Now we're ready to uh, remove the cleaning solution. Okay. And now it's on to the rinse and clear water. Okay, we've got a basin full of hot water. And the trick is in the tub, completely submerge it. Back under the water. Back out of the water. Okay. At this point, we're ready for the next step. We let out that water. Take a colander. And you want to use plastic because um, the brass cleaner can in interact with the metal. My uh, plumbing drain pipes are all plastic, so I don't worry about it. 
causing a problem with pea trap, etc. Next up, we're basically just going to rinse these out a little more thoroughly in pure hot water. About it. Next phase will be to start the drying process, and I, I see a lot of people that seem to spend an enormous amount of time and effort on the drying part, and I don't really do that. It just doesn't take that much time. I think really heating with a 1200 uh, watt blow dryer. I think heating the brass up really accelerates the drying process and as you can see the first step I do is agitating it in the colander with with the blow dryer then I put it out on the counter and blow dry it while it's uh, out there and it's all ready to pretty much go in the tumbler within about an hour from the start to finish so do a little show you a little bit of this part of the process Now one of the things that I, I want to point out is that normally when I do this I don't stop obviously to talk to the camera but during the course of a two or three minute session of heating this breath and agitating it, turning it over and over, most of the standing water in the cases is gone by the time I'm finished with this step and because of the heating of the breaths there's a lot of evaporate, evaporation that goes on and, and the um, evaporative effect is is pretty significant so that once they come out on the counter they're 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 quite a long ways towards drying so here we are we finished the portion at the sink they've had the hair dryer on them for three or four minutes maybe and we're gonna go ahead and just take these out already got quite a few of them over here Basically, if you agitate cases, they tend to come out right side up, so it's pretty easy to take them out, set them on the counter. You can see, based on the amount of water coming off the bottom of the cases, they're still a little damp, but none of the cases really have anything like standing water in them, just a little few drops around the flash holes, and that's about it. And it's during this time that we will, once in a blue moon, find a 40 or 9 millimeter case inside of one of the 45s, but normally that doesn't happen, but once in a while we'll catch one. And once these are all out, I'll show you the next step. So, just wanted to take a minute and show you the state of the brass at this point in the process. Can you see that okay? You see what they look like? Am I in the picture? Okay, so you can see that after the, the brass cleaner rinse, this stuff's pretty good. A lot of people would probably just load this right like it is. I, me personally, I like it to be absolutely gleaming clean. And I think that based on what little bit of time and effort we spent here and the few bucks on the Birchwood Casey brass cleaner solution, it's worth it to get the results that we get from the next step. So at this point we're going to finish putting these out here. By the way, I, I put the colander on top of a folded up paper towel just to capture any of the water that drips out. You can see it gets a little water there. Okay, next step. Okay, you have all those pieces out. I don't know, to me this looks like this may not be a full 400 pieces here. Maybe less than I thought. Uh, this is a good opportunity to do some quality control here. I've got one that's uh, pretty deformed. Uh, we just recycle those. We don't we don't try to straighten those out in the uh, in the uh, 
sizing die. Here's another one that's just ever so slightly out. I know I could probably fix those, let the sizing die, straighten them. Um, I just, to me, it's not worth it, and there's no reason to put the wear and tear on the press. Uh, and I just remove them from the, the equation altogether. All right, so here we've got them all set out, and they're all a little damp. You can see there's some moisture here that came off the bottom of the case. So what I'm going to do is turn the 1,200-watt hair dryer on high again. I'm going to blow into the cases. You don't want to get right on top of them. Uh, they'll fall over, particularly 9 millimeter will just blow right over. So the idea is to get the hot air going around the cases, and you can see these are pretty tightly arranged. So I'm going to move them apart as I do this, and I'm going to move them back and forth to allow the moisture that's under the cases between the countertop of the case to escape. You might have seen me take a couple of those out and tap them. Uh, I do find occasionally there'll be a few that have a little water in them, real water, not just moisture. And I'll pull them out, tap them against the, the paper towel here, and get that excess water out, and then just drop them back in and put them on the edge. But basically the idea is get the brass hot enough that it wants to make the water evaporate on its own, and simply move them around a little bit as we go. And with 9 millimeter, this is always this is also the point in time where we will find 38 super or 38 super comp brass, which sticks up, or as is more often the case, we'll find 380 caliber, which will be a little bit shorter, and we'll basically pull those out at this point. Okay, so it's been about eight minutes that I've been heating this with the blow dryer moving them around and anytime I found the occasional case that had some visible water down looking into the top I would pull that out, tap it out, put it back and it's amazing these are completely dry so 10 minutes ago they were in the colander still wet and now they're completely dry ready to go into the vibratory cleaner and that is basically the last step of the process. I use Lyman's Green corn cob media almost exclusively for 223 cases that have been deprimed. I use a corn cob fine blasting media that I got from a sandblasting supplier. It's a little finer, it doesn't get caught in the flash holes. But otherwise, it's always Lyman's Green. And it works really well. These can go in there for two hours and they come out absolutely gleaming. I'll, I'll do a, a video of those coming out. But the next step is basically going to go in the cleaner and then uh, case separator and they go in the box ready to load. I'll show you the final product in a minute. So here we are at the last stage. This brass was in for a little over two hours and it looks really good. So two hours in Lyman's Green and the media was pretty old so it's pretty dirty. Um, media lasts a really really long time 
with this system given that the the washing and the brass cleaner and rinsing in the hot water gets the vast majority of junk off of them. They're still a little dirty inside. Fairly clean, not as clear clean as the steel pin method on the inside, but very, very bright, very slick, very shiny on the outside. And they're ready to load. You'll occasionally get one, here's one, where you'll have a little bit of tarnish that's really deeply embedded. And those I'll typically put aside as practice ammo, won't use that as a match. But uh, it still will load and fire almost guaranteed every time. I, I've never had a problem, but I just assume for matches not have any question, have it, rather have it perfect. So there you have it. This will all go into the to the bin here. And from there it's ready to be taken out. Get a little bit of one shot and then put into the case feeder hopper on the Dillon 650 and ready to make some 45 ACP. That is all.